Now we hear not about uh, driving in whatever car, but parking. This guy is called Silvan Rath of ParkTech. Welcome to EcoSummit. Thank you. Handshake, clicker. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Silvan is my name. I'm the founder of ParkTech. And as Jan said, I'm going to speak to you about parking. So let's look at some statistics first. There's roughly a billion cars in the world right now. There's roughly two trillion search minutes in search for parking happening every year. So there's a lot of time people spend searching for parking in urban centers in the world. Now, let's switch the scene a little bit. There's roughly three billion toothbrushes in the world. But there's four billion mobile phones in the world. So why am I telling you this? Because what's happening right now is a perfect storm of technology. Things that are happening, the advent of mobile technology enables us to solve parking now. Technology is available, we have developed it, and we're now introducing it into the market. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail and what's happening in the smart mobility space. So if we look at the GSMA, they have um, put out a study that says that every car will be connected by the year 2025. So that's not new to a lot of people in this room, but it is one of the things that is happening that is helping um, wh wh what we are doing. Then also, Audi, one of their development directors, speaks about they believe that it will be real within this decade. And that is speaking about self-parking cars. There's a lot of technology out that lets the car park, but the actual data that tells the car where there's a free parking spot is what's missing. So almost the last mile for autonomous driving is what's missing. If we then switch the scene a little bit even further, Roland Berger speaks about the cost that incur because of emissions driven by um, urban traffic. And those 266 billion in the 30 biggest cities of the world, a portion of that, roughly 20-25%, comes from parking-related parking emissions. And this is what we are tackling. Now, what's happening? in the space of crowdsourcing or share economy, if you want to call it that. Let's just look at what's already in the market. Everybody knows Wikipedia, then maybe a bunch of people know geocaching. So who of you is a geocacher? Uh, just a few. So um, roughly 5 million people are ge geocaching actively. Roughly 20 million people are contributing to Wikipedia without immediate um, incentive, it's, it's uh, an indirect incentive. Waze, a large company that has over 50 million users, they crowdsource traffic jam information. Then if we look at the business side of this, Lyft turns over a billion dollars a year, and Airbnb, another crowdsourcing type um, um, service, also turns over a billion dollars a year. So it's a billion dollar business that's happening with crowdsourced information already. Now, I talked about that perfect storm. So what's feasible with technology today is that on mobile, you can access real-time information about crowdsourced parking availability. Um, you can also put it into cars. So we have some people from car manufacturers in the audience and, and people from mobility service um, companies. So putting that into cars is a logical step. And also tying it in with smart city technologies that are already available. Now, let's look at the product for a little bit. Um, what we are introducing is crowdsourced parking. So the mobile phone is able to save an average urban um, citizen 15 minutes of parking search every day. Every, every drive starts and ends in a parking spot. Now, that is roughly 30% less urban traffic, roughly 1% of global fossil fuel emission is what can be saved with this technology. Um, the social user engagement that we, that we offer, and I'm going to talk about the product in just a minute, is also very interesting. Just imagine you can give a parking spot to someone else who is in dire need of a parking spot. You made that person's day. You can be a, a parking angel every day, basically. Um, and it needs to be easy to use. If people need to do a lot, it won't work. It needs to be automated, and that's exactly what we developed. So let's look at how the user experience is. You download ParkTech, you install it once, you opt into location-based services. From then on, the technology automatically detects where you've left a parking spot and where you're about to leave a parking spot. So you would want to use that daily. Um, our current users are using it 2.1 times a day. Um, 
if we look at it in a little bit more detail and at the, um, at the app itself, so the app knows when you've parked, it knows when you've driven away, when you've vacated a parking spot, it knows when you're about to vacate a parking spot before you vacate it. So seven minutes, let's say, before you drive away, you know that you're going to drive away. So for example, it's already live, you can see it on the app, you can see that someone else has driven away a couple of minutes ago or is going to drive away a couple of minutes in the future. And this is a real-time occupancy um, solution that happens in the background. Speaking about data privacy for just a minute, um, it's important to us. All the data that is, being, um, that is being worked on only stays on the device. So all the algorithmic calculations that takes the sensor information stays on the device. No data is being transferred only the information about the parking spot. So there would never be a movement pattern or anything. Um, it's actually part of our DNA. We want to make sure that everybody understands that. So going a little bit further, we are a small team. We're an early stage um, um, startup from here, Berlin. We have extensive multinational corporation background. So most of us uh, are not the, the typical um, Funny, funny startup folks that, uh, that Pascal mentioned, but um, we endeavored in this new technology because we believe it can really change a lot. So it's a patent pending technology that we're offering. What we do, we have an open partnership model. So we don't build our own reach. So we don't generate a lot of users for our own app. It's more a showcase, pretty much. But people in this room, people working for large corporate companies, can use these technologies and implement it and use it to delight the user. That's our open partnership model. So at the heart, we are a technology company. And our business model is selling technology. So we will, we will um, further develop the technology. We already have um, the technology that's in the market right now and can help you reach your customers more efficiently. So, why am I here? Get in touch if you're interested in the technology. Um, so you can find us on, on Twitter, social parking um, is, is our hash. Um, you can find us on, on, obviously, the app stores for iTunes and Google Play. You can download and test it. And if you're interested, come speak to us. Great pitch, great pitch. Thank you. And um, I like the idea that there's an important information when somebody is leaving a parking, a parking spot because then it becomes available, right? Absolutely. This is really the crucial moment where you have to grab the data. Yeah. That is. There, there's two crucial elements. One is that the technology automates the process. We believe that it's very hard for you, even if you, if you want to help, to remember taking out the phone and pressing a button every single time. So automating it is one of the crucial elements. And the other one is, like you said, bringing supply and demand, so the right new parker to the right parking spot at the right point in time. Yeah, and you, you automate it because you are approaching your car by walking. Yes. Yeah, and then once um, you, you go again, away and you, you, and you do it faster than walking, you assume <laughs> that you are sitting in the car. Yes, there's a multitude of things happening. We call it sensor fusion, so there's, there's the gyroscope, accelerometer, a lot of different sensors involved. And then we basically take, uh, take behavioral patterns mm. that stay on the phone, and then we deduct from that when somebody's going to drive away. So let's say every Wednesday you go to, to, your, to your gym, to sports, then we would know that over time, and we wouldn't think that you're driving away because we know you're going to go to... And you don't touch technology that is embedded in the car, but just carried by the user. Correct. Yeah? If the user was offline, there would be no... Um, opportunity to create uh, such a service. That is correct. And speaking about that, there's like 60 million cars being sold every year, but there's roughly a billion smartphones being sold every year. Yeah. So we believe that working with the OEMs, we believe that introducing it into the car's um, HUD is very important, but we think the faster route for both the cities and the consumers is just using it on the smartphone for now. And how are you funded up to now? How much, how much money did you raise? So we just closed a financing round, in fact. We are still under press embargo, so I can't, uh, can't name it yet, but it's going to be public soon. It's a, it's a large fund that has invested. Um, so we're secu securely funded. Um, we, we were angel funded before that. Um, I ran the business in nights and weekends while I was still with a corporate uh, for over the last two years, and now finally I'm um, full-time. So. And do you already have revenue, and how do you make money out yes. of this? Yes. Because this is what I didn't understand, did you? <laughs> <laughs> how do you make money with this? 
So um, we have revenues, we sell the technology, um, so an SDK, a module that you can put into your app. So let's say you are an owner of an app that shows you the, the gas prices. You could also put our SDK in and help the customer find parking. So that's what we sell, technology licenses. Okay, wow. Another question from your side, Ben. Ben needs a microphone. We, we should actually have two microphone runners. One of our ambassadors is lazy, if I find him. <laughs> um, just um, interested how you get around sort of complexities, like in your total addressable market, you have some parking spaces which are going to be indoors, uh, big. How, how is that uh, counted? Um, how are parking spaces in your driveway, which you don't want other people kind of parking in? Uh, th those types of... Uh, you know, the obvious one is there's a load of parking spaces on the side of the street where you, you get the first one, but there's a lot of ones where they're not really accessible, you can't get the LBS, etc. Yeah. How, how do you cope with those, please? So there are three elements. One is uh, we also crowdsource information, so we learn from the users where there is a private, like a driveway or something, so we learn that from them. There's mapping information that's publicly accessible, so that we can use that. Um, the indoor piece you sp spoke about is quite interesting, because right now it's still difficult to get a GPS signal inside and then do the positioning. There's the advent of indoor positioning um, technology, but we also have a prototype that allows us um, to actually um, do indoor positioning for this parking spot only without hardware being installed in, in the place. Um, so that's not something I could deliver today, but we do have a prototype and we are working on that. Okay, Silvan, thank you once again thank you. for joining us on stage. Thank you.